and for History Paper 3. In your exam this morning, you're going to be given Section A and Section B. Section A is Viking Expansion and Section B will be Living Under Nazi Rule. You will be given one hour, 45 minutes for this exam. We recommend that you spend 50 minutes on Viking Expansion and 50 minutes on Living Under Nazi Rule. So make sure you're managing your time wisely. So this video is going to focus on how do I answer the questions to the Viking expansion paper and some top tips to include in your exam. So let's look at the paper then. Section A will look exactly like this. You will be given three one mark questions, one nine mark question, one ten mark question and a choice of an 18 marker. We need you to answer every single question. So let's go through what they look like. One markers, you're really good with these now. Really simple, easy three marks to gain on the exam. You need to give one example or one reason or one feature. Try to pick the most obvious to ensure that you get the mark. Okay, nine markers will always start with this sentence starter. Write a clear and organized summary, which is essentially a story. A historical story. So in this case, it's write a clear and organised summary about the Volga Vikings. So you need to aim to write two PEE -E paragraphs. Point, evidence, explain. Okay, so here are some sentence starters if you're answering this question. Always try to use the question in your first line. So start with things like firstly or secondly. Okay, so firstly the Volga Vikings came from, because that's what the question is about. We also want to aim to use language like consequence or cause or significance because this list links to historical concepts that we need to include. So try to use language like as a consequence of this, furthering this. Therefore, this is significant because the aim with nine and ten markers is to get as much historical knowledge in as you can. So number ten, the ten marker. Question number three. This will always start something like what was the impact of or what was the cause of or what was the consequence of. So this question is about the great heathen army. Again, exactly the same. Point, evidence, explain. Two paragraphs. Write as much as you can in as much detail. Try to use dates, key names, key figures. Okay. Always use the question in your first line. So firstly, one major impact of the great heathen army was. That's exactly what the question says. What was the impact of the great heathen army? We want to use that language consequence, significance, cause, similarity, difference in our answer. And finally, you will have a choice of 18 marker. Choose wisely. Spend a minute reading both questions and thinking about which one you can most easily answer. So for an 18 marker, we're aiming really for an introduction, a short introduction, a couple of lines, four paragraphs and a clinching argument. However, if you're really struggling and you don't have four paragraphs, make sure that you do at least one paragraph for the argument and one paragraph against the argument and your clinching argument. And you can get up to 15 marks um, if you do that, but we're aiming for those four paragraphs really. So in each paragraph, you need to make your point, you need to explain. We obviously need lots of historical knowledge because this is a history exam. And at the end of each paragraph, I want you to link back to your argument. So say something like, therefore, I think this because, and go back to what you said in your introduction. That's at the end of every paragraph. Keep going back to the question. That's really, really crucial. So I'm just going to spend um, about 10 minutes just going through some key information about the Viking expansion. None of this should be new. It should be everything you've learned in revision. OK, but it's just a last minute quick reminder before you enter that exam. So let's have a look at the Vikings from the very beginning. So homelands, the first case study. The key is in the name there, homelands. This is all about when the Vikings are at home, okay? So if you get a question to do with homelands, you need to talk about Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, okay? We know that life in the homelands before they traveled to different places was could be cold, icy, and harsh winters. The topography was very challenging during the winter, okay? But the Vikings were very good at overcoming this. So they were self-sufficient. That's a great word to use in your exam. They were able to produce everything that they needed without the help of other people. Okay, so they were self-sufficient in terms of being farmers. 
um, hunting, getting food that they needed to eat. They also used to smoke meat to survive through these cold winters, okay, as you can see here. But the most popular job, the most common job, was that Vikings really were farmers. They weren't really warriors at this point. Yes, they did, um, they did train to fight, but most of the time their day-to-day -day jobs was farming the land and being able to survive. So, as well as this in their homelands, they also started to perfect amazing boats so that they could use for trading and raiding and they had boats for lots of different purposes and they designed them for different purposes so for instance they used oars to go faster they had a square leather sail they had the clinker technique which is the overlapping of wood so they would be able to survive the harsh seas they had a dragon head as this element of, of fear factor okay and they had shields to protect themselves and a deep draft if it was a trading boat or a shallow draft if it was a raiding ship so in their homelands, they spent a lot of time crafting and creating boats that they would later use for, t for trade outside of their homelands, but also trade within their homelands, which you can see here. Be careful that you don't forget that they did trade within their homelands. So Kapang, Head, Head, Hedaby, or Heedby, and Burka, they'd swap things like animal fur, jewellery, falcons, walrus ivory between each other. Okay. In their homelands, it's also important to note that their main religion was Norse mythology, okay? It wasn't pagan, okay? They, they believe in Norse mythology. It's the Christians that call them pagans. So the main gods that they prayed to was Odin, Thor, Frey, Freya. They also had a fatalistic attitude, which was important, which they had a no fear of, of the outcome of death, okay? They were ready to fight to enable them to get into the, uh, Odin's hall in Valhalla. So that's homeland in a nutshell. Main job, obviously farmers. If you get a question on that, that's everything that you'd need to mention. Okay, really quickly then, moving on to the Volga Vikings. Something that's really important for your exam is the Volga Vikings came from Sweden, not Denmark, not Norway, Sweden. Okay, they were named the Volga Vikings because they traveled down the Volga River. Okay, they traveled east first to Staria Lagoda where they traded in Staria Lagoda. It was in Staria Lagoda that they heard of the riches of the Byzantine Empire and the Arab world, Baghdad. Be careful you don't get those mixed up, okay? Baghdad is the Abseed Caliphates, Constantinople is the Byzantine Empire. So these journeys were treacherous, they were difficult, there was 1,500 miles um, to travel, there was rapids, um, they had to portage across land, which where they risked being robbed. It was a really difficult and dangerous journey. Okay, so to make that journey, they had to have settlements. Okay, they had settlement in Novgorod and a settlement in Kiev. That meant that they could tr control the whole of the river route in Western Russia, which is this area here. Okay, so you've got people who became in charge of these areas. You've got Oleg in Novgorod and you've got Vladimir, okay? Vladimir is quite key here in Kiev because he actually converts to Christianity. He marries the Byzantine Empire's sister and creates an alliance and changes the culture um, and life as they know it in these settlements. Now, the Volga Vikings were great raiders, great traders, but they were also great settlers and stayed in these settlements for a long time. That's important for your exam. So why Baghdad then? Why go to Baghdad? Lots of different reasons. Okay, one of them, it's a beautiful exotic city. It was called the Circular City. There was lots of bazaars, hospitals, stone buildings. There was a million people there. It was a bustling place. Okay, but the main reason why the Vikings were attracted is for these two products, which is silk and silver. Now, silk would have been a precious um, material they would have never felt before. And silver, they didn't have any silver mines back in their homeland. So they could take these items back to their homelands and sell them for more. Okay. Occasionally, uh, the Vikings did raid Baghdad. Okay. In 912 and 943, they raided Burka and, and Burda. Um, and they took over. However, most of the time, the relationship was stable. Okay. They, they traded peacefully in Baghdad is the Arab world. Let's compare that to the Constantinople then. Uh, Constantinople was quite a different city to Baghdad. It was previously a Roman city. Okay, it had 12 miles of high, high walls, incredibly hard to raid. Okay, they wanted spices, olive oil and wine. 
Now, the relationship they had with Constantinople was a lot more turbulent, as you can see from this graph. Okay, there was loads of times that they tried to raid, tried to take over, and there was treaties that were made to try and stop the Vikings from doing this. But in 945, the major treaty was set between the Vikings um, and the people, the Byzantines, and it said only 50 Vikings could enter. They could only buy a limited amount of silver, and they weren't allowed any weapons. So despite the turbulent relationship, they actually well respected the Vikings because they asked them to join the Varangian Guard, okay, to join their defence system, which the Vikings did do. So that shows that there was a relationship. It shows that the Volga Vikings were not just traders, okay. They were skilled fighters, skilled warriors, skilled settlers, okay. So, raiding and settling, okay, as we know, the Vikings raided and settled in many different places across Europe, okay. One of the main places that they raided, which we looked at yesterday in the revision session, was the Great Heathen Army in 865. They attacked England to gain revenge for their father Ragnar's death and ended up settling in England and creating Dane law, so actually taking over half of England and living there for over 14 years, like York and Jorvik. So finally, just to round up, we look at, at the kings. Now, there were, these are the first three Viking kings, and all of these kings are from Denmark. You need to make that clear in your exam. The first kings come from Denmark, and it starts with Harold Bluetooth. Okay, so Harold Bluetooth, when he became king, he converted to Christianity. That's one of his main achievements. He created a defense system to stop the Germans from coming into um, Denmark called the Danewerk. He dug up his father's grave and gave him a Christian burial, which shows his conversion to Christianity. Okay, he started minting coins to help with trade, and he also built bridges to connect people. That's where Bluetooth, the name, comes from, connecting people. By the time of his death, um, he was the king of Denmark and Vik, which is a small part of Norway. Okay, he was a successful king, particularly in Denmark, okay, and particularly known for his conversion to Christianity. So we move on to his son, Sven Forkbeard, who comes after Harold Bluetooth's death. And Sven was a different sort of king, um, still successful, but in different ways. So he continued to allow people in Denmark to follow Norse mythology or Christianity. Um, he attacked and conquered England on Christmas Day, Okay, only he died a few weeks later, but he did manage to conquer England. He continued his father's legacy of minting coins. He was paid because of the amount of times that he raided. He was paid lots of money, so he was very wealthy. And at the time of his death, he was king of England, Denmark, and Norway. So he'd conquered more places, but had more of a turbulent uh, time as king. And then we come to the third king, who arguably could be the best of the three kings, so that is Sven Forkbeard's son as well, Canute the Great. That's partly why he's called Canute the Great. Now, he was the one that was seen as the true Christian. His, his grandfather, Harold, set off on the journey of Christianity, but Canute was seen as the cr true Christian. And he put a lot of effort into building relationships with the English church. So he gave them more land, he stopped the church paying tax, and he built more churches. He's also known for bringing peace finally to England. After years of being raided by the Vikings, they were happy to have a Viking king who brought peace. The, one of his other achievements is that he created an Anglo-Scandinavian empire, meaning that he brought the English and um, the Vikings together. So by his death, he was king of England for the longest, Denmark and Norway, and he had alliances across Europe. So he was the most successful um, of the kings. And that's everything for Viking expansion.